You know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But for some reason, the channel has been taking off like crazy. We just hit 82,000. 82,000. I am humbled. I am thankful. And I'm truly blessed. And I want to say thank you to all of you guys that are here watching. Most of them may be now 49er fans that are on the bandwagon to just troll me. Um, trust me, 49er fans, you don't have to email me pictures of Brock Purdy or you at the stadium and all that stuff. Okay, I get it. And I pray, I pray that Kansas City wins because I won't be able to live with you. I'll have to just change my email and just have it unlisted because I just can't deal with you guys. You guys, geez, so flip, are merciless. Um, at least, at least the Eagle fans have calmed down because they realize they're in the same boat. What's evident here right now is if you take away the 2017 Super Bowl from the Eagles, the Eagles are the Cowboys. I know this is hard to believe. We've got the same problems. Each team has the same problems. Um, we sit here and we've learned that Jeffrey Lurie and his son and their analytics, that they really um, control the team and what they're doing and so on, that Nick Sariani was hired because he was basically a patsy because he would literally do anything that they said they want him to do. And as Philly 500 said, they've just basically taken his cannolis away. You know, you know, when they ask you, what do you do now that they've got, you know, a, a new offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore? You got that stank. And you're a new defensive coordinator, you know, that they've taken these responsibilities from you. What are you going to be doing? Um, I'll be sitting in maybe on some of the defensive meetings and, and, and doesn't even know. Doesn't know. They have cut them off at the knees. And does that sound familiar to, to, with the Cowboys? And some of the same problems that they have, we have. We have a hole at linebacker. We do. We have a hole at linebacker, and that's one of the things that, you know, we need to address. Now, the Eagles, we can say that the Eagles have been going all in consistently, and it's paid dividends for them. They went to a Super Bowl. And now we've got Jerry Jones, who's, <laughs> you know, it's evident that we're going to go all in. We're, we're not looking towards the future. We're going to go all in. Yeah, we'll see what we're going to see. And so this is where... To me, all in isn't as bad as you may think it is. For me, it's getting a legitimate running game going. It is taking care of your linebacking position. It is helping your offensive line a little bit more in your defensive line because the games are won from the trenches out. And I'm looking and I'm saying, if you go out and get three, maybe four quality, qual not, not bottom basement, not barking basement, not scratching dent, serious players this team is a 100 percent better location i mean seriously if we took the year before had we had signed bobby wagner to be our linebacker in the middle you know that this defense would have been a hell of a lot better a hell of a lot better at stopping the run when we played san francisco that could have been a difference maker if we had had you know in, in, instead of michael gallup or noah brown in the playoff game against San Francisco, just one of those guys, we would have been better suited to take on San Francisco. If we had had, and, and this is no disrespect to Zeke Elliott, but Zeke Elliott had like 26 yards and Tony Pollard, the, you know, that, that seemed like 21 yards running the football. If we had had a legitimate running threat in that game, which part of that is the offensive line, as well as Zeke Elliott, you beat San Francisco. You do. Now, this year, oh, that's a different story. We just didn't show up. 
We didn't show up. But if you did have, hypothetically, just hypothetically, if you had had Derrick Henry in that backfield during this playoff run against Green Bay and could have matched him up smash mouth football, if you'd had a Bobby Wagner in the middle or Bobby Wagner type of linebacker, a guy who can support and do the tackling as opposed to a safety right there. And if you'd had another stud defensive lineman to help clog up the middle, you don't get gashed like you did. You don't get abused like you did. You just don't. And that's where all in doesn't mean you got to go out and get 22 guys. I'm just saying supplement what you have here. If you don't think that Dak Prescott can put the whole team on his back and, and take care of not having a running game or an offensive line that's blocking for him, then how about we go out and get those things? That's what we should do. And that's what Philadelphia tries to do. Now, I did a video yesterday because I'm trying to keep Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones accountable. When they tell us, I'm tired of being baffled by bullshit. I'm tired of being told what we want to hear, and then the actions don't match that up. So I want people, and I'm going to try to, I am always Mr. Positivity, but I am going to try to, at every point, point out what all in means. What all in means. It doesn't mean going out and signing a journeyman or over the hill damaged goods player. It's going out and getting a legitimate one. So yesterday, knowing that Patrick Queen, a 24-year-old linebacker with the Baltimore Ravens, six foot, 230 pounds, second team all pro linebacker in his prime, uninjured, is going to be a free agent and you have a massive need at linebacker, that's the kind of player that it is you're talking about going all in. That, that is. Don't go out and get me four guys that are so-so linebackers and think we can do linebacker by committee. Get me a stud that can be out there all the time. And lo and behold, our brethren, the Eagles, and Philly 500, I'm glad he's feeling better. Um, I guess his fever's finally broke. I need to talk to him today and see. He's been under the weather for about a week, him and his wife. But I am happy that he's feeling better. But here we go. I wake up and I hear this. Yeah, you go out and you get him. But you have to still go out and address the linebacking position. And I, 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 was, I was reading this thing on Pro Football Network, right? They, they had the top landing spots for Patrick Queen. And, and here's what it said. Pound Ravens linebacker Patrick Queen is set to hit the open market. Which team would be the landing spot for Queen if he doesn't resign with Baltimore? Pound Ravens, Flock, Pound NFL. So that has the landing spots, right? And it has three teams. Seattle, Washington, and Dallas. It's baffling to me when you look at the linebacking position the Eagles have and how bad it is. How the Eagles are not on that landing spot? It just, it, how could the Eagles not even be there? They, they should be the first team on there. And the reason why they're not on there is because how this team has dealt with certain positions in the past. This team needs to get away from always going the same exact, doing the same exact thing. You know what? You want to go out and get a Brian Burns or some as a premier guy? Fine. But if you can do that and add like a Patrick Queen or a linebacker, it doesn't have to necessarily be Patrick Queen. A a a good linebacker, a guy that could come in and play. Okay, get get yourself a veteran linebacker, and then draft a linebacker in the second round. Do you know what a change that would be to the Eagles and what they've so done proud in the agency of my son. year in and year out for the last, what, 20 years? It would be a completely different thing, okay? I think the last linebacker they drafted in the second round was Michael Kendricks. That was like 10 years ago, okay? So they need to think about these positions a little differently, okay? They're not, this team is not far off. I do not believe this team is far off to getting back to the NFC Championship game. They can get there, but it's going to require uh, the front office to think a little bit different than they have. Uh, that's where they have to be held God. accountable. They have to be willing to change how they view certain things. And going out 
and making sure you invest money in a linebacker is of the utmost importance. And if you can invest money in a linebacker in free agency like a Patrick Queen, who is who I would want, and then you can go draft a linebacker in the draft, let's say in the second round with one of your second round picks, that would be a huge change from what this team normally does, okay? Um, usually, they like to go out, spend big money on a pass rusher, which I don't mind. Um, they'll spend money on a receiver in free agency. They don't mind doing that sometimes. However, if you look at the free agency uh, with, the, with the wide receiver position, uh, you got to wonder, are the Eagles going to go out and really go out and sign a, a decent uh, number three wide receiver. They're already paying uh, A.J. Brown what he's making, Devontae's what he's making. How much are they going to be willing to pay a veteran wide receiver for a third wide receiver? I'm going to leave it right there, but can, can I say I am so proud of my son. My son, Philly 500. You can just take that. Just, just take what he just said. Take what he just said and say, Take off Eagles and say Cowboys because it's the exact same thing. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking in the mirror. In fact, I'm looking straight ahead at Philly 500, and I'm seeing the Dallas Cowboys. I'm seeing our reflection in the mirror with the Eagles. We are the same. We're in the same place. This is where I've, I've said before, the Cowboys always, and, and I was surprised that we drafted Mozzie Smith. I still have hopes that that works out, but we'll have to wait and see. But the Cowboys always, always, always view the edge rusher, the cornerbacks, you know, uh, the, the tackles, you know, uh, these positions higher then the grunt work guys, the interior defensive linemen. Oh, you're you're a, a, a tackle, you know, you're, you're a tackle. Okay, so you can be a one technique uh, guy too. Or you can also play the edge. They're not interchangeable. You know, oh, we, we need linebackers. Oh, we'll just take a safety and make them a linebacker. No, it's not. You, you can get by with it, but you're not going to maximize the position. And the Cowboys, after investing the money that they did in Jalen Smith, they really haven't. It's been eh, older guys, injured guys, you know, uh, we'll just take another position. And if the Cowboys are going to win, they're going to have to change what they're doing. Philly 500, Cowboys, same position. So that's one, you know, site, of course. And understand at this time of year, what happens? We know what happens at this time of year is automatically any name player out there, any name player out there is going to be linked to the Cowboys only because they know it will get publicity. We all know that if you say Cowboys and boom, every Cowboy fan is going to run and check this out. It just is. That's just the way it is when you are a Dallas Cowboy fan. So, Knowing this and knowing when I say that the Eagles and Cowboys are basically in the same position, you have to think with Mike McCarthy not getting an extension that this is probably, well, he's on the hot seat. Uh, let, let's be clear here. He's on the hot seat. That in essence, the Cowboys, maybe Dak Prescott is on the hot seat. Um, it's just hard to believe that an MVP candidate could be actually on the hot seat, but that's the way it is when you're with the Dallas Cowboys. And you can look at the Eagles. Nick Sariani, he's on the hot seat. Jalen Hurts, there's questions, especially if you watch the uh, skill competition uh, with the Pro Bowl and seeing Baker Mayfield actually beat Jalen Hurts, and it didn't look like Jalen Hurts could hit the broadside of a barn. So, yes, Eagles and Cowboys, we are a lot the same. Interested in, and that's Jalen Hurts, who had by his standard – a down year last season. Will he slump or jump next year? I mean, I think he's jumping. I think he's going to be right back. Um, this team, the core, still together. But I think the addition to Kellen Moore being able to open the, the fill up. So now it's not just these short routes. It's going to be shifts, motions. We saw what he did in Dallas. We saw what he did with the Chargers. And the fact that Vic Vangio's there means that defense is going to come back, which is going to give him short field and opportunities. The weakness of this team last year was their coaching staff. They've improved it with veterans that are proven and, 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 and 
show that they can do it at a major way. It's worth pointing out that Jalen Hurts has had different offensive coordinators throughout his whole career. I mean, look at this time here. Again, it was Doug Peterson who called the offensive plays in 2020 when he took Mm -hmm. over late in the year. So this will be, for all intents and purposes, the third different offensive coordinator he's had in a four-season career, what what impact does that have? And I'm glad we're talking about that context because even, you know, a different quarterback like a Baker Mayfield, the same thing. We have to understand that every time you change the system, it does set these guys back. And a lot of people thought, oh, the Eagles, yeah, they're going to be fine. Lose both coordinators, but, you know, uh, Nick Sirianni, he has it down. This offense is going to say the same. Well, this offense did not look anything like last year. But I think for Jalen – the competitor that he is, I, I, you know, he had the injury. This was a weird year for Jalen. I think he will bounce back. I also think everybody's on notice in Philly. Nick Sirianni, the quarterback, the roster, the coordinators that they bring in. I think this is a pivotal year. We talk a lot about Mike McCarthy, but this is also a pivotal year for Nick Sirianni because yeah. he sat there at that press and says, hey, just essentially – I'm confident that I have answers, even though he didn't provide answers as to how it came, all fell apart. What do you got? O- only because their future head coach, if, 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 if uh, Sirianni struggles, is right there in Kellen Moore. Kellen right? Moore. He, he's been a candidate, and if this offense flourishes like all his offenses have, then you have the, you have the future right there in-house in a cheap option. I also like think him. it's imperative for them from an offensive standpoint. you got to figure out what your identity is going yeah, to be. Yeah. That's something that was wow. up in the air with the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> what should it be? Well, be running the ball that well, great offensive he, line he, and play action here's behind Here's the thing, it. though. you got to figure out who's going to be your running back because DeAndre, they got like three running backs that are free agents this year. But, you figure out who your back is. Uh, Kelsey's probably not coming back. But I agree with you. If you cannot rush the football, in which da- the Dallas Cowboys could not do, well, you're, one you're not, like not going to win a Super Bowl in today's <laughs> game. The really offensive not. line is getting old. You mentioned Jason Kelsey may retire, and, and all those guys so who have been so good well. are getting old as they are. And then Jalen Hurts wasn't as much a part of the run game last year as he had been the year before. I mean, w- will we say that Jalen Hurts is that fair, is as good as Dak Prescott? Can we, can we make that comp? So yeah. we saw we saw with we were comparing apples to apples when you think about what Dak was underneath Kellen Moore. Yeah, he should you know Jalen Hurts should be every bit because I think their team is a little bit more complete when you think about the weapons and AJ Brown. Quick final word, quick. I, I think the main difference is that with Kellen Moore you're gonna see quarterback under center a lot more. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we saw with you know. Uh, with Jalen Hurts throughout his career, he's been in shotgun. Mm-hmm. What is that going to look like now with Kellen Moore? Like, are they going to incorporate quarterback runs more? Under, like, how is that going to look? That's my main question. We'll there we go. Kellen Moore put in place to maybe take Nick Sirianni's. Wow, I hadn't even thought about that one. But, <laughs> woo, boy, that's a whole other video in itself. All right, good people. I hope you're going to have a great Saturday. We will be doing our 5 o'clock Eastern live stream. That's only five hours.